every heart said amen. 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 Remain standing. Let us pray. Father in heaven, this one more time, a few of your handmade servants who have come to glorify your name. We are in the service that you ordered. Bless us as only you can and take all the glory. It's in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. We'll count it down by faith. Amen. Amen. And amen. Remain standing. For I have received of the Lord, which I will also deliver unto you. For it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. Today we are going to examine the scripture, underlying scripture, the anchor scripture for today's lesson from Proverbs 28, verse 26. Put it up in King James Version. He says, he that trusted in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. We shall rest there and talk about living your best through divine wisdom. You may be seated in the presence of God. Living your best through divine wisdom. Now, We'll be talking about divine wisdom all month long. We had a conference on Saturday, September 7th. We talked about divine wisdom by consecration. Divine wisdom is the wisdom from above. And I've spent time explaining to you the four kinds of wisdom. The human wisdom the devilish wisdom, the sensual wisdom, and the divine wisdom. Today, the Lord wants me to speak to you about things that he has given to you, but you need divine wisdom to operate them properly. Sometimes we think because we're big and bad, we can do anything we, we want to do. Now, a sister here has been in church for a while. She talked to me about fasting. I said, I need you to change it up a little bit. She listened to what was said, and she changed it up a little bit. Money didn't touch her hand, but she has peace. That's more than $2 million. Now, that's operating in divine wisdom. Hmm. Divine wisdom is operating correctly the knowledge you have. Knowledge comes from experience or learning. They're both the same. Hmm. If you insist on speeding, you get a ticket or end up in a crash. One way or the other, you're going to learn the lesson about speeding. There are laws on earth. There are spiritual laws. The law of the earth. Number one is gravity. It matters not how well you can dance. Matters how, doesn't matter how high you can jump. You are coming down. Matters not how much your plane costs. If you don't obey the law of lift, you will crash. That's the law of the earth. There is a spiritual law as well. The law that says, you bring me all your tithes, and I will open up the window of heaven. He said, give out of your little so I can multiply. It doesn't make any sense. The reason why it doesn't make any sense is because it's in the spiritual realm. Until I put myself where I understand the spiritual laws, I'm stranded on earth. We are heavenly beings on an earthly assignment. So our orders come from heaven. The peace of the earth is as long as nobody bothers you. The peace of heaven don't matter who's standing before me with whatever they have. Now, 
Proverbs says, he that trusted in his own heart is a fool. The heart in the scriptures is not the one in your chest. <laughs> it's the one that carries the body that you're in. Uh-huh. Let's go back to basics. Man is a spirit that lives in the body and has a soul. So the heart of the man is the spirit that carries the man. I do this often. Yesterday we went to a funeral. It was the body of the young man that he left behind. He no longer needed that body. <laughs> so our bodies is our housing. Knowledge is facts. <laughs> she said, God has healed her of cancer. Matthew 8, 17 said, he took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. She says, I've already been healed. What are you doing here? Fact. The truth is, she's healed. In today's lesson, divine wisdom is the ability to rightly apply what you know. <laughs> the truth of the scriptures has no competition. The Bible tells us we walk by faith, not by sight. So what I hear from God, who put me in this body, I ought to believe rather than what another man said. Woo. Doctor says, you have cancer. From who? Do you know who I am? Cancer, what are you doing here? You have been taken. So you are a lie if you show up in my body. Oh, y'all don't hear me. <laughs> So what is this thing for me to live my best life? What are the things that I deal with in this physical element, but I need others from heaven? Number one, time. Listen to me and listen very carefully. If you are taking notes, take them. Take them well. You're going to need this. Time. I'm going to teach you five T's that you live by if you will apply divine wisdom to them. Number one is time. Do you know that in the beginning, God said, let there be light, and there was light, and he created some things the first day. Then he waited and created some more things on the second day. The third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, the seventh day, he rested. Can anyone tell me what he did on the eighth day? Never mind. In Psalm 90, verse 12, the Bible says this. <laughs> this is a psalm for Moses. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. In Ephesians 5, 16, the Bible says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. James 4.14, I'm going quickly, but I'll come back. James 4.14 says this, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. You and I are sitting in church today. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We think we're going to go to work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go see this person, and I'm going to say this to that one. We don't include God in what we're saying. The wise one says, if it's God's will, I'll get up in the morning. So let me explain time for you. Time, there's only 24 hours in a day. <laughs> Even God operated within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. He created some things the first day. He waited till the next day to create some more. So the 24 hours, everyone under the sound of my voice, even the ones outside the sound of my voice, they operate within 24 hours. Nobody gets another second. 
The wisdom is this. Do you know what time it is? The wisdom is this. Do you know where you're supposed to be per time? Are you standing in the wrong place when you're supposed to be over there? Uh -huh. Are you talking to people you should have stopped talking to already? You claim you are saved. You are still hanging around the ones that smoke reefer. But you claim you're no longer smoking. You're just inhaling. <laughs> supposed to step on your toe. They are gossiping beer, but you don't drink anymore. But you hang with them. The preacher said sometimes we hang too close to sin. Just a little push we're in. Time. Time. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, put it up, Edie. There is a time for everything under heaven. I need you to get this. Because if you don't ask God to open your eyes, you will be at the same job too long. And you become retarded. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. To everything there is a season. And a time to every purpose under the heaven. You can stop there. There's a time for everything God has put in your, in your hand. For everyone here, we were not born at the same time. God picked a particular minute in a particular day, in a particular month, in a particular year, your father and your mother to bring you into earth. You have an exit too. Everyone gets on the highway because we have a car. And you see several exits. You get off on the exit, you get lost. You all don't hear, I'm teaching you about time. For everything you have been given, there's a time for it. But if you don't use wisdom, you are doing the same thing you have supposed to have been done two years ago. You are still on it. And you're wondering, why am I not moving forward? In Psalm 104 verse 19, the Bible says, He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun knoweth his going down also. What does this mean? Please hear me. The sun rises in the east. It goes down in the west. God doesn't mess with it. Because God gave us his instruction and he just does what God says too, per time. Oh my goodness. The moon will not come up when it's not his time. Because he has been programmed to come up at a certain time. We are the only ones that God created and gave free will. We don't ask for the time, so we do anything we think we're big and bad enough to do. And we wonder why we are stranded. Let me move on. Number two, the talent he gave you. First one is time. Next one is talent. Your talent has a time for flourishing. Romans 12, 6 and through 8. You don't need to go there. For every one of us, God gave a gift. And he gave us a time to operate in that gift to his glory. But if we don't know the time, we are singing when the choir is done. Mm -hmm. You come when the choir rehearsal is over and you want to sing. You are past your time. Your talent is good. You missed your time. Hmm. Now, the dog got pregnant. And so did the elephant. The dog gave birth to six puppies. Elephant still pregnant. Six months later, the dog got pregnant again. Six more puppies. Shortly after that, he got pregnant. He said, Elephant, you and I got pregnant at the same time. How come you're still pregnant? The elephant looked at the dog and said, When you give birth, you give birth to puppies. When I give birth, I give birth to an elephant. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> when you miss your time, you will birth the wrong thing from your talent. Mm. First Peter 4.10. 
The Bible says, as every man has received the gift, even so minister. Minister? Mm -hmm. The same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The gifts we have been given, the talents we have been given, we are supposed to minister to other people who are not gifted like I am, serving the Lord. Miracles have disappeared because we don't use our gifts. We do not push our gifts to the ultimate so God can manifest. In Romans 12, he says the gifts he gave us is for us to grow or kill. But when we grow it, we get to 1 Corinthians 12, the manifestation of the Spirit. So until I operate my gift to the maximum, God will show up. James 1.17 says, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. Come down from the fire of light, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Romans 11.29 says, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. Hear me. The gift he gave you, he didn't give to nobody else. But the gift he gave you is up to you to control. If you will turn your gift to glorify him and your fellow man, then God will show himself. Do you know that healing is children's bread? <laughs> you have ministries that you see on TV. Benny Hinn is one. Now, because he has to provoke God, by his worship and dedication, then the spirit will show up and then people can be healed through him. If he doesn't get to that frenzy, nothing happens. Whew. Your gift is for you to manage to the glory of God. Do you want God to show up in your life? Operate in your talent to the maximum and see what God does. Uh, number three. Let me move on. Your treasure. <laughs> your treasure. Your talent could be your treasure. Your talent could be your treasure. That thing that you do, that they send for you from across the country because you are so gifted in it. Don't be full of yourself. Don't charge for the gift he gave you. This is where people have lost their lives. God gives you a gift. You think my gift, because he said he make room for you, you think I ought to charge. Hmm. Problem. The gift he gave you is a million dollar gift. But you charge $2,000, you corrupt yourself. You never see the million dollars. He said, do for others, what I have given you to do. When you do it to the maximum, I'll show up. You don't have to beg for money. I'm, not, I'm talking about me. Came from a six-figure income to zero income. But my mortgage hasn't been late once. Haven't missed a car payment. Haven't begged anyone to lend me money. Never called anyone in this church or outside the church. You need to pay your tithe. Not me. No, sir. Because he told me what to do. <laughs> he said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And all the things everybody is dying for, I will add. He said, in Matthew 6, 24, he said, no one can serve two masters. Hoo -hoo. He said, you either serve me I hate money, or you serve money and hate me. What is he saying? When you operate in your gift and you pay attention to God, money will chase you. But if you chase money, you will have to sacrifice God in the altar of money. You will have to lie to get some money. Uh, in Matthew 6, 19. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. 
me and you are not on earth, right? We need money to survive. But yet he says, seek him first. Forget the food. Forget the clothes. Forget the houses. Forget all of that. Seek me first. What, does he, what is he saying? Look for me in everything. Once you find me, the thing you think you need. The thing you think you need. I'll put it in your driveway when you're not looking. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The Bible says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. Treasure. Treasure. There is no house that you have that is the biggest house. Okay, you're looking at me strange. How big is a big house? All right, I want you to compare your house to the earth. Mm. Your house is in one corner in one little place nobody knows. But you think you got a big house. Well, zoom out and look at the earth. How big is that? No, 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 I'm talking earth. How big is the sun compared to the earth? And you're bragging about your little house. If God blows on you, it'll be dust. First, Corinthians, First Chronicles, chapter 29, verse 8. Look at this. This is the Old Testament. I got two more to go. Just bear with me. And they with whom precious stones were found gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jehiel the Geshonite. Now, God does not want your leftover. Treasure, treasure, treasure. It's what's in your hand, what's in your pocket. Better yet, what's in your heart, that's your treasure. The gift he gave me that I share with everybody that comes around me without looking for monetary compensation is the thing I get paid for the most in my life. I'm a trained industrial designer with several patents. When he called me into ministry, he disqualified me for that. Not one person has come to me to draw a line so they could pay me. But I'm an accomplished designer with about eight patents in the U.S. Patent Office in the United States. I'm not talking Nigeria, I'm talking here. Nobody calls me. Because he has called me to do this. I say, who pays me? He said, I pay you. He gave me a choice in 2015. He said, do you want to go back to work or work for me? I work for you, but how do I get paid? He said, just do what I tell you to do and leave the other one alone. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 says this. <laughs> the Bible says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The Lord has a treasure, but he reserved it for you. Look at this. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season. Not your season. <laughs> and to bless all the work of your hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. Thou shalt not borrow. Take this one to heart. This is a country where if you don't owe money, you are nothing. Hear me, hear me. You're not going to like this. Your credit score is more important to you than your Christian life. Because you have put your faith in man to give you credit, not God. So you borrow and borrow so your credit score could go high. Can I tell you this? When they're ready to lend you money, they're the nicest people you want to talk to. Miss one payment. They call your phone, your heart will skip. You don't want to answer the phone, but you pay for it. Debt. Lord said, you shall lend unto many nations, thou shalt not borrow. What's the condition? Seek ye first his kingdom. A 
Number four, your tribe. Well, you think tribe is, is only in the Indian colony or in the African country. Tribe is human race. The Bible is not written to the white man or yellow man or green man. They tell you the Jesus you're worshiping is a white Jesus because they're not going anywhere, because they have not tested your Jesus. The Jesus I worship doesn't have a color. If you do what he tells you to do, he will do that thing he said he would do. He said this, my covenant will I not break, nor alter what has come out of my mouth. So if Mr. A does A, B, C, and Mr. Z does A, B, C, they will get the same result. Color notwithstanding. The Bible says in Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image. He doesn't give color here. Listen to me. We get fooled by someone saying he's white, he's yellow, he's blue. There's only one Jesus, and he died for everyone. Yeah, you might stand in my way, but he will show me how to go up around you by divine wisdom. Yeah. The job they won't give you. He gave you an idea to start your own business. What scares you? <laughs> Did you know that everything that God created has a name? That means if God calls that thing by his name, it has to answer. Someone get this, get this. The, the pew you are sitting on came from a tree. The, tree. the tree came to be when God called his name. So if God speaks to the bench you are sitting on, it will get up and walk out on you. Because when you call something by its original name, that he came to be. He will obey you. Your tribe is wired just like you. Their eyes are where yours are. Oh, Jesus. They laugh in the same language you laugh. They cry in the same language you cry. You might sing a song that is anointed. And you, speak it, you sing it in a language nobody's ever heard. They will affect everyone in the audience. Why is that? One God, one faith, one tribe, one baptism. <laughs> in 1 John 4, 7, the Bible says, Beloved, or beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Your tribe is the human race, not the goats, <laughs> not the pets, sorry, dog owners, not the dogs, but the one that laughs in the same language you laugh, the one that cries in the same language you cry, the one that sheds tears just like you do. That's your tribe. Finally, your tabernacle. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> well, we are born, every one of us, of a woman. We come out the same way. The Bible says no one knows how the bones are formed in the womb. But yet, we get pushed out by the birth canal. And we cry because we've left the comfortable world we were in. We come into this bright world and there's noise and dust and all kinds of stuff, so we start screaming. And we comfort the little baby. And everybody is rejoicing. Here's what Solomon said. Solomon said we ought to be crying because this one has been born, is going to suffer. The one that died just went to a better place. Y'all don't hear me. Your tabernacle is the house that God built and put you in to serve him on earth. But he says this in 1 Corinthians 6, 
verses 19 and 20, he says, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So my body is my tabernacle. Now, now, now. <laughs> Bible says that physical exercise profits little. But spiritual exercise, <laughs> here's what he's saying to you. You need to move the joints. Called exercise. The reason why God put so many joints in us so we can move. But better yet, you need to move the spirit man. In 1 Corinthians 3, I believe it's verse 16. You don't need to go there. The Bible says we strengthen the inner man. The inner man is what carries the body. Because when the inner man gets weak, he goes back where he came from and abandons the body. And we call it the remains. And that's what we put in the ground. Hear me? Your tabernacle. In Romans 14, 8. In Romans 14, 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. So this body is my tabernacle. This is where I dwell. To serve the Lord, if I have any issues with this body, I need to take it up with the one that put me in this body, and I need to listen to what he tells me to do about this body. See, we all have bo different body types, right? Hello? Are you all still awake? Yes. Some of us have a double chin. I didn't create it. That's my body type. But I have to know how to function in this body. So I could do the will of my father who sent me into this earth. Hear me, hear me. <laughs> Some things that happen in your body doesn't necessarily happen in somebody else's body. If you don't pay attention and take counsel from God how to treat your body, you will lose your body. If you find out you have blood pressure, leave the salt alone. The fried food you need to leave alone because it's not good for your tabernacle. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, I'm going to give you a few more scriptures and then we shut down. Nobody sees fire and puts their hand in it. Nobody dives into a pool of water who doesn't know how to swim. Listen to me. Just because you eat the wrong thing and the result is not immediate doesn't mean it's not coming. Mm. Remember the physical laws? The gravity? When I throw something up, if I throw it with a lot of velocity, it will travel far. It will fall in two seconds, but it's coming. If I don't get out of the way, it will hit me on the head. So the things I do in my tabernacle that I have learned is dangerous for me, it will eventually catch up with me. Time, 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 time. Listen to this. In Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5, the Bible says... <laughs> For the living know that they shall die. See, it's an appointment we have. We're all going to die. If we don't respect the tabernacle, don't respect the tribe, <laughs> our treasures, we don't respect the talent we're given, we don't pay attention to the time. We're in big trouble. He says, but the dead know not anything. See, if I don't apply wisdom to my time, to my talent, to my treasure, to my tribe and my tabernacle, I will go before my time. But what I was sent to do is not done because I miss my time. I abuse my treasure. I abuse my tribe. I ignored my tabernacle and I wasted my talent. 
God, give God some praise. Thank you, Lord. Rise to your feet. Give Jesus a hand clap of praise. If you have received anything from him today, give him some praise. So be careful. Use wisdom. None of us is going to live forever. We're only here for a short while and we have an assignment. Amen. Is there anyone in the audience who does not know Christ? Is there anyone in the audience who does not know Christ? The door is open. Is there anyone today? Anyone needs special prayer? You can come forward to the altar. We'll pray for you. 